Someone asked me recently how I painted a Grimoire worm tongue, and my response was, a just question, my liege. As Grima is pretty dark to go with his sneaky personality, he was prepared first with some matte black spray as an undercoat. Now, we are going to give him a bit of colour here today, so we can distinguish the different parts of the clothing that he is wearing. Firstly, the sleeves on his undergarment were given a base coat of basilisk brown, as well as just underneath the neck area. His brown robe will have some nice detail applied to it later in the video, but for now we just need to block out the colour. Thinning down your paint slightly with water is best practice for applying smoother, thinner layers, without clogging up any details. Here the robe was painted twice, so that the black underneath was fully covered. For the fur on his robe, something a bit different was applied here instead of just painting it grey, as this would inevitably emerge in with his hair. So a red was used. We are just initially going to use it as a base coat here, and red is the colour of betrayal, which seems fitting for our worm tongue. The handkerchief in his hand had some banshee brown applied, and was used to give us a pale colour to work from as this will have some added detail later on. For his face, I wanted something completely different to how I've painted skin before, and that was to give him a pale, pasty and shady looking appearance. So the skin base colour of tan flesh, which is normally my go-to, was mixed with a bit of grey and added to the face and hands. Don't worry about getting any of this paint onto the hair for now, as this will be painted much later, so we can tidy it up then. With the base colours now set, we can turn our attention to the next stage, and that is applying washers. Using washers, or shades, depending on what paint brand you use, allows us to create shadows as well as saturate the colour of our previous paint layer. Here, on the sleeves as well as the fur, some mid-brown was used. This makes the yellowish colour more of a vibrant orange, but also turns the red into a brownish maroon colour. Using shade paints is so much fun, as they can start bringing a miniature to life by adding quick shadows onto the textures and folds of materials. Now for the skin. As mentioned earlier, we want him to look a bit of a shady character. So instead of using a brighter, natural skin tone, some alien purple was mixed in with our tanned flesh, and thinned down with some quick shade mixing medium. This then effectively turns our new colour into a shade paint, and using a fine tipped brush, the purple tones were added onto the skin. Focusing mainly in those recessed areas, around the face and the nose, and between the fingers. After going around these areas once, some specific areas were picked out carefully, such as underneath the eyes, and around the hairline to darken them down a little bit more. Now that the skin is coming along, the eyes and mouth were picked out at this point with some mocha skin. This is mainly to create that darker shadow, but this was also useful to go between and around the fingers to make them stand apart from our pale handkerchief colour. These days I tend to paint the eyes at this point, rather than at the end like I used to, due to the fact that if I do go wrong and get any onto the skin, then it doesn't matter, as I will paint over it next anyway. Sticking with our grey skin tones, Filthy Cape and Corpse Pale were mixed together to make the skin tone even lighter in colour. Making sure to add some water to thin down the paint slightly, this was applied to the more prominent areas. So we are looking at the forehead, nose, cheeks and chin for the face. Having this paint diluted slightly, you can build up the colour to your desired effect on the model. Man, he does not look happy at all. I reckon Irwin must have declined his request for a nice moonlit seafood dinner under the stars at Edorus. The fingertips and knuckles also had a highlight of the same colour, to bring these areas out more. 
An optional extra at this point is to pick out the bottom lip. I find that doing these on character models is quite useful as it shows a bit more detail on an already nicely sculpted face. Speaking of details, let's start adding some onto this sculpt, shall we? After layering and highlighting the cloth with Banshee Brown and Skeleton Bone respectively, some small lines were painted on with a fine tipped brush. This is to mimic the appearance of a lacy look to the handkerchief. The skeleton bone afterwards was thinned down with a fair amount of water, and this was then glazed on back over the squiggly texture to soften the appearance of the brow. We will do more of this technique for the cloth below later on. For the embroidered fabric on the arms, the fine tip allows us to pick out the netted look by painting on some thin lines. And to not waste any paint on the palette, the black was watered down a lot to create a thin wash, which would then be used to pick out the shaded areas for our fur. We can let that dry out in the meantime as we turn our attention back to the embroidery. Add some small dots of wolf grey to where the lines meet up on the pattern. This cooler bluey grey colour would stand out more than just our standard grey next to our warmer yellow tones of the cloth underneath. Moving on to our fur now and using a worse for wear looking brush, some fur brown was dry brushed on slowly by effectively patting the brush onto the sculpted surface and letting the paint just attach itself to these raised areas. Again, don't worry about getting any paint onto the hair as we have yet to paint this in. Just watch out for his face, however. Our second lighter colour of scar tissue was used to enhance the dry brush highlights of the previous stage. And I quite like this added pop of colour compared to the darker greys and blacks that you see in the films. Grima's hair was reset back to black by tidying up these areas where some naughty skin paint ended up. And once dry, it was given a couple highlights of grey. Firstly, a mid-tone of hardened carapace on the left, followed by dungeon grey on the right. Only a few strands of hair were picked out here, as we mainly wanted it to stay a darker colour. And now for my favourite part of the miniature, the brown cloth texture. This method was created after I experimented with a few paints one day and came up with something that I liked. So if you have some test models and a bit of time, just get some paints out and get creative to see what you can come up with. Our original oak brown colour was lightened up slightly by using some thin down dirt splatter, and then this was followed up by fur brown. By keeping the paint fairly thin, we can build up the colour in layers. And now for the pattern. It's squiggly line time! That's right, some silly misshapen lines were painted on over the whole area. By changing the pressure on the brush will affect the line density and give a non-uniform look to it. But just have fun and paint a random pattern here. Once dry, really thin down your black paint with water so that it is super translucent, as you can see here. This black paint was added to the whole area of our brown cloth and left to dry. Subsequent layers were added on just to the recesses to our desired effect to create those darker shadows. Once this shading was done, some fur brown was added to create some highlights for the cloth folds. And you could do some variations of this for your own miniatures, even with different colours. Now I'm thinking something cool for the elves of Mirkwood here. Future video maybe? The belt is pretty tiny here on this miniature, so our detail brush is really getting a workout today. The sides of the bristles were used to pick out the edge of the belt as much as possible, as I find this method quicker. But you may like to use the tip of the brush instead. Try both methods to see what works best for yourself. 
Whilst the metals are being picked out, I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you to all of my patrons that are helping support this channel, and a special shout out goes to the top two tiers on this video. There is more hobby content over there as well as monthly community challenges, where you could win some cool hobby products and painted miniatures. To learn more about it, check out the link in the description below. It would be awesome to see you join our fellowship over there. And now for our black cloak. We are going to apply a couple highlights here, the first using a regiment brush, followed by a detail brush. The regiment brush is great for adding a slightly wider painted line for the highlights, so all of the folds of the cloth were picked out here. Don't worry if you make any mistakes or add too much paint, as you could always go in with some black afterwards to tidy up the areas. If you would like to see a different take on black robes and give it a more scrappy textured look, then check out the Witch King video on the channel and follow the steps there. The final highlight of Field Grey was then added with our detail brush. These bristles have a sharper, thinner point to them, allowing us to effectively paint in the lines of our previous stage and create that highlighted look. The paint was only applied to a small part of our previous stage. So focusing our efforts to the top and the bottom of the robes where the folds are more prominent was the aim here. He's now ready to become a valuable member to Rohan and King Theoden himself. And to see how to paint him up, check out this video right here. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep on hobbying.